Tinakwe, welcome to the Naval Point boat ramp. Well, let's go have a dive. We're running a wee bit late because the, part, the uh, tide is coming in right now. We're about two hours past, two hours past the uh, low tide, and uh, the water in Littleton Harbour is always murky. So we'll see how we go. Heading out on this dive, I now have a Tohatsu 9.8 two-stroke engine and a Trukit Discovery 3.3 inflatable boat. Now I'm going to be giving a couple of shout outs to a couple of channels later on in the video so make sure you keep watching. It might be your channel or it might be a channel that you're interested in. I've launched this boat a couple of times now and one of the things that I've learned is to try and not overload the entire boat with a whole lot of weight because you're, you're manually putting it up and down that boat ramp and you can see here, right here, I take that anchor box that's got the heavy anchor and chain plus my weight belt and stuff and I actually put that down the bottom of the boat ramp and then put the boat down and then when the water's when the boat's at the water then put it into the boat and launch the boat <sighs> but at this point when you get in the water right here this is very exciting and then whoa, 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 let's start that engine and let's get going I'm entitled to be here too. When I watch other people's dive videos, I sometimes wonder whether they too get harassed by noisy, territorial, variable oyster catchers. I think it's just that they're being defensive, you know, they've got babies or chicks or their nest is nearby, but just, you know, just leave me alone. Like, I, I, I get to be there too, you know, you know, like you don't own the ocean, right? Shared resource. Okay, let's have a look. Sometimes I watch other people's dive videos and I see this beautiful crystal clear water with 20, 30, 40 meters of visibility and I just think, yeah, that'd be nice. So when I get in the water, it's like this, especially here. This is Littleton Harbour. I mean, look at this, I'm in three meters of water and it's like, you can't see anything. Oh, look, there's my anchor. You can, <laughs> you can only see it because it's like a silver or gray color. But Littleton Harbour is close to where I live, which is, you know, why I dive here sometimes. And you've got to go to certain places, you know, where there's seaweed and rocks and, you know, reef structure to actually try to find some power. And, you know, you've got to be, you've basically got to be willing to do blind diving. And that's pretty much what this is, blind diving, you know, dive, dive down, hope that you stumble upon a power or something. And, you know, you get a lot of small ones, just like that one, you've got to put it back. 
I get a lot of comments from people saying that, oh, geez, it's not that hard to get power. You know, kind of keyboard warriors, you know, that people who don't actually understand the fact that sometimes in some parts of the country power uh, grow small and they never even reach legal size and then other places you're spoiled for choice like down in bluff see here got some muscles i managed to get some muscles while i was on this dive didn't take too many but you know the power they tend to grow quite big down south where it's colder you know around bluff stewart island area um, and if you try diving for a power up in um, Coromandel or Auckland, you're pretty much wasting your time because, <laughs> you know, they're like the size of golf balls. Yeah, and look at this amazing visibility here. Now, just have a listen to the breathing here. Here's a countdown, five, four, three, two, one. Ooh, found some power down there, look at that. Oh, let's, uh, let's pull one up and let's measure it. And this is the thing about diving uh, around uh, Banks Peninsula is that a lot of the power just barely, barely make it to legal size and a lot of them don't even make it to legal size they're just too damn small unfortunately this location uh, didn't turn out to be have all that many power um, i mean overall this whole reef structure where i was there is actually quite a lot there there is muscles there there is kind of there there is power um but you know yeah if you sort of dive down in, in one like for example like a 10 square meter area you know you might dive into one spot and there's just not much there but if you sort of move along you know into another spot then you will find something and it's sort of hit and miss like that but with the whole blind diving thing, when you're sort of diving like this and you've got, geez, only about a half a meter of visibility, maybe one meter tops, it's, it's hard work, it's tiring because, you know, this, this video is edited. I'm showing you kind of the highlights here, you know, like when you're spending a half an hour on the water recovering, you know, cause you've got to spend that recovery time on the water and you're going up and down and up and down. Here's another power I pulled up. That one's a bit small, that one's got to go back. When you're doing this up and down and up and down and up and down, it really takes it out of you. You don't actually see in the video, you don't understand. Um, but you can hear me breathing from time to time, you know, especially like when I get back up on the boat here, you can hear me breathing and, and huffing and puffing and that. And part of that is, you know, f physical fitness and cardiovascular fitness, but also part of it is just how damn draining it is. You know, uh, especially the blind diving, you know, with, with when it's cl crystal clear and you can see the bottom, it's a, it's a bit better. But, you know, when it's like this, yeah, it's hard. It's hard work. Getting back into the boat, I have developed the technique of removing my weight belt and my weight vest whilst in the water and throwing them up onto the side of the boat and then launching myself up onto the front of the boat to get back on. tiring. It's a lot more tiring than it looks. Oh jeez. Uh. Really legal. Need to find
find somewhere a bit more sheltered, a little bit calmer. All right, time for those shout outs that I promised you. The first of the two channels is called A Kiwi Life. This is Dave from Auckland. Now, Dave really helped me out because I didn't really know much about outboard motors and he had a video on his channel uh, about a Yamaha 15 horsepower outboard. So I watched that video and then I phoned up Dave and I said, hey Dave, teach me about outboard motors and that was really helpful. So go to Dave's channel, find the video you like, check it out and tell him that Kiwi Kaimoana sent you. The next channel I want to shout out is called Nick Outdoors. This is a fella, it's actually a bunch of guys from Malaysia and they do boating trips in Lake Kenya which is a freshwater aquifer lake in Malaysia. And the thing that was really cool about this is they've got a series of videos there with the same true kit boats that I have. It's like I have a true kit boat and I left a message in the comments and it's like hey God, teach me about the, the uh, fuel efficiency of the outboard motor because I want to know and he was really helpful and he told me all about the fuel efficiency so that is Nick Outdoors the channel from Malaysia okay you can't see it right now but I've got a GPS app on my phone right there I'm gonna do a bit of a speed test now Let's see how fast I can go in this thing right now we've got it on 50% throttle the boat's not on a plane it's just cruising we're doing about eight kilometers an hour Alright, let's see how we get up to when we get into about third, three quarters throttle and then we get up to when we're on the plane. And then when we're on full throttle. Welcome to Quail Island, a place I have never been. Right now, it is time for a snack. Time to have, oh my goodness, there's fresh water up there. Look at the waterfall, how cool. Have a look right there. Oh, wow. Look at that. Neat. That's so cool. I hope it's safe to drink. Ah. 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 Little waterfall, refresh me. Ah. <laughs> oh. Oh, cold. Oh. 
gonna have a look at these birds over here. Go say hi. Another boat at the boat ramp. Getting picked up. I have to wait my turn. I don't want to jump in there too quick. MPI says the most humane way to kill a crayfish is to put it in the freezer for half an hour. I don't know if the same applies for power. I guess so. I'm gonna eat this guy tonight, so might as well put him in the freezer. I guess. Next to you. Oh, she's here. Mm. All right. So, what you're asking for? Here. Oh, 
ate it all up. Wow. She likes the power. That's all you get. That's it. What a cool way to end the video, huh? You know, you got the subscribe here. And you got the click on another video. Check out another video. See that, eh? Click on another video. Have a watch.